Here we are together again on the radio. Many of you sent me uh, this story that I'm about to read to you right now. Many of you sent it in. And um, I've got many comments about this. Uh, you were absolutely right. If you thought I had something to say about this, you betcha, baby. It's from the Associated Press. The title is Men Who Do Housework May Get More Sex. Dateline, New York. It says here, American men still don't pull their weight when it comes to housework and child care. In whose opinion? That's an opinion. This is supposed to be a news story. Just who decides how much is the correct amount? You see how our news is biased. You know how uh, people love to talk about the bias in favor of liberalism and against conservatism? Well, 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 this has nothing to do with that. This is one of the inherent biases that we men deal with all the time. We, uh, what is the Associated Press doing saying that American men still don't pull their weight when it comes to housework and child care? Just what business is it of theirs and who decides what the correct amount is? This story is sexist out of the gate. It goes on to say, this is the first sentence of the story, but collectively, they're not the slackers they used to be. Oh, yeah, we're just a bunch of slackers. Says here, the average dad has gradually been getting better. Listen to the, the bias in this story. The average dad has gradually been getting better about picking himself up off the sofa and pitching in, according to a new report in which a psychologist suggests the payoff for doing more chores could be more sex. I'll get to that in a second. Just who is making these decisions about uh, what is the proper amount of uh, help that men ought to be giving around the house? And just where does the author of this piece, somebody named David Crary, uh, get these statements from? Are there statistics? Is there empirical data? Where is it? Who did the research? Who made these decisions? Is there a housework institute? Is there a child care organization that can uh, measure how much child care there is and how much needs to be done and how much men are doing or aren't doing or should be doing? I talk to you all the time about how the media are biased towards women and against men. And here is Exhibit A. This is a news story. How dare they? Now, it says here a psychologist suggests the payoff for doing more chores could be more sex. You know what? A lot of you guys call up here and say that you got married so you could have all the sex you want. That it would be free, that you wouldn't have to take girls out. It would be free, free, free. You get free sex. Many of you gave that lame excuse for getting married or having a live-in girlfriend. Well, guess what? There is no free lunch. At least when you're married or living with someone, there's no free lunch. Look at this. If you do what uh, your girlfriend or wife or the commandant at home considers enough child care or enough chores, you might get more sex. You know a way I can guarantee you more sex? Don't get married. If you're married, get divorced. You'll be getting more sex without having to lift an extra finger. Says here the report, released Thursday by the Council on Contemporary Families, summarizes several recent studies on family dynamics. One found that men's contribution to housework had doubled over the past four decades. Another found they tripled the time spent on child care over that span. But you see, it still doesn't stop the Associated Press and others from calling us a bunch of lazy slackers. A bunch of unmotivated slobs who don't help enough. Yeah. 
the story continues. It says that the report says, quote, more couples are sharing family tasks than ever before. And the movement towards sharing has been especially significant for full-time dual earner couples. Men and women may not be fully equal yet, but the rules of the game have been profoundly and irreversibly changed. <laughs> Are women contributing equally financially to the household? Raise your hands, ladies. How many of you make as much money as your husband? How many of you contribute the same amount to the household expenses? Are you a bunch of lazy slackers? Are you contributing equally to the rent, equally to the mortgage, equally to the car payments, equally to the student loan payments, equally to the grocery uh, costs, equally to the uh, utilities like cable TV, electricity, gas, water, garbage pickup? Are you contributing equally to your kids' uh, care, the cost of raising children, clothing for the kids? Are you contributing equally to everything, or are you just a bunch of lazy, good-for-nothing bums, ladies? See, it's perfectly okay to imply these things about men, but don't you ever dare say that about a woman. You're a misogynist. Yeah. It says here, some couples have forged partnerships they consider fully equitable. Mary Melcoyer, a Washington-based fundraiser for the National Organization for Women... Who, but can you imagine how pussy-whipped uh, this husband's going to be? Like her lawyer husband works full-time while raising six-year-old triplets. I smell fertility treatments. 47-year-old woman with six-year-old triplets. She said, we'll both talk about how we're so lucky to have someone who does more than their share. He's the one who makes breakfast and folds the laundry. I'm the one who fixes things around the house. That's just great. <laughs> That's great, Butch. Very nice. Joshua Coleman, a San Francisco area psychologist and author of... Uh, this is a man who wrote this, by the way, but he lives in San Francisco, so take it for what it's worth. The, the book is called The Lazy Husband. How to Get Men to Do More Parenting and Housework. He said equitable sharing of housework can lead to a happier marriage and more frequent sex. Oh, yes. Coleman, who was affiliated with the Council on Contemporary Families, said, If a guy does housework, it looks to the woman like he really cares about her. He's not treating her like a servant. And if a woman feels stressed out because the house is a mess and the guy's sitting on the couch while she's vacuuming, that's not going to put her in the mood. Could it be because she's not doing a goddamn thing around the house? Why do we assume it's the man's laziness that makes the house a mess? I had a woman living in my house, and my house looked like a, a, a war zone. And ever since I've lived alone, my house, Art, you've been to my house, does it look like a mess to you? No. No, my house is spotless. And there's no woman around there telling me how I'm a lazy slob or how I don't lift a finger or how I'm not uh, contributing or I'm not uh, part of the housework or you'll get sex if you take out the garbage. There's none of that crap going on in my house. I get sex whenever I want it. And no woman in my life has the right to comment on the way my house looks or how often I take out the garbage or at what time I take it out. That's forbidden. You come in, if you like me and you like my house the way it is, you can hang out with me. If you don't, get the F out of my place. Just get out. All you pussies out there who accept this, this criticism, why are you accepting it? Why do you tolerate this? Yeah, I'm going to get up and vacuum so I can get a woman in the mood. That's fantastic. I know how vacuuming gets me aroused. I'll tell you what, when I'm uh, uh, when I'm uh, hearing a vacuum cleaner, oh, it's all I can think about. Getting my crank yanked. Look at that. Oh, here, get the corner over here. Stick it right in the corner. Here. Oh, oh, that's hot. Oh, I'm all about this. Oh, baby. Ah, oh. boing. Yeah. Says here, I assume these people are pussy whipped as well. Says here, the report's co-authors, sociologist Scott Coltrane of the 
University of California, Riverside, and Oriel Sullivan of Ben Gurion University said they were addressing a perception that women's gains in the workplace were not being matched by gains at home. Why should they be? You know, the more time I spend at work, the less housework I get to do. That's how it works. If I'm coming to work and I'm putting points on the board, which I am. Have you seen the ratings lately, by the way? If I come to work and I'm putting points on the goddamn board, and that means I have to work more, it means we've got more advertisers, it means I've got more socializing, more clients to see, more appearances to make, more commercials to read, more production to do. You know what? When I come home at night, there's going to be stuff in my house undone. When I have gains at the office then you cannot expect to have gains at home. You can't. Because something's got to give, you idiots. The more I'm at work, the less stuff I'm going to do at home. Why would a woman expect that the more she goes to the office and the more gains she makes in her career, that she's going to make gains at home? What, the housework's going to get done more efficiently because, because she got a raise, because she got a promotion? It's the exact opposite. The more that happens for you at the office, the less likely it is you're going to get anything done at home. Jesus. Coltrane and Sullivan wrote the following. The typical punchline of many news stories has been that even though women are working longer hours on the job and cutting back their own housework, men are not picking up the slack. And why should we? They said this perception was based on unrealistic expectations and underestimated the degree of change, quote, going on behind the scenes since the 1960s. The change, they said, is too great a break from the past to be dismissed as a slow and grudging evolution. Among the findings they cited in the U.S. Time Use Diary study show that since the 60s, men's contribution to housework doubled from about 15% to more than 30% of the total. Over the same period, the average working mother reduced her weekly housework load by two hours. Sounds like an improvement for women to me. Says here, between 1965 and 2003, men tripled the amount of time they spent on child care. During the same period, women also increased the time spent with their children, suggesting mutual interest in a more hands-on approach to child raising. Sullivan and Coltrane predict men's contributions will increase further as more women take jobs. It says here, Pamela Smock, a University of Michigan sociologist who also works with the council, said a persistent gender gap remains for what she called invisible household work, scheduling children's medical appointments, buying the gifts they take to birthday parties, arranging holiday gatherings, for example. All right, uh, all right, Bruce, get ready to set up the play date. Come on, Steve. Call Bob and Bill and the other fathers and see if you can arrange a play date for everybody. Go right ahead. Just kill me. Just effing kill me, okay? Put the goddamn bullet in the gun. Stick the pistol right up against my temple and pull the goddamn trigger. Kill me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Do you see the sexism inherent in this article I've read you? Do you see how preposterous it is that men can expect more sex if they do more housework? It's just another incentive to not get married. I get sex whether I do housework or not. If I don't feel like doing any housework tonight, I'm going to get laid anyway. It's not going to be a little drill sergeant or a little prison guard walking around the house, cracking the whip and telling me what to do. There is no commandant in my house. I just don't understand why you guys tolerate it. Tom like it. one 800 800 Tom like it. one 800 866 all those guys out there that are that are knocking these broads up and, and telling them that they love them and, and all of that, you know, these girls don't love you. These girls love the wallet. These girls don't want to have your baby. These girls want to have job security. It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm dead. Like his 
show. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. David, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Yep, Dave here. Um, I'll tell you what, Tom, I know exactly what you're saying. I went through that. I went through that for eight years, and it was the worst experience of my life, and it was just, I can't say enough about it. I mean, a man can be haunted the rest of his life over something like that. Well, what do you think about that, though? Well, I used to work 12-hour days, six days a week, and I used to come home, and I had a house full of people, half of them i never seen, and she's sitting there with her buddies, and I feel like a stranger in my own home. These people would leave, and she'd expect me to help her clean the house, too. Well, so what did you do about it? Uh, ended up getting divorced, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Real fast, buddy, real fast. Love that. And uh, how did it work out for you in the end? I'll tell you what, Tom. Uh, I drive a brand-new car. I own three houses. I rent two. <laughs> I live in the third. <laughs> and I always got a couple of grand in my pocket at least. That is no lie. How great is that? It's perfect, Tom. Uh, you know, and, and you know something, Tom? I'm 42, and I date girls from 22 to 35 constantly, all the time, all the time. Sounds good to me. Sounds fantastic to me. And, yeah. and how's the ex doing? Uh, if you're okay, she married a plumber, and they just lost their house six months ago. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, fantastic. Hopefully he smells good. Well, I'm an engineer. Shows up on time. I'm over an engineer, so I, you know, if that's what she's happy with, hey, more power to them both. <laughs> Tom, you know what? This is, man, it, it, you know what? It's a nightmare. I kid you not. I still have nightmares over this. I went through this every day for eight years, and I literally still have nightmares. And I tell all my friends, you're an idiot to get married. You've all got great jobs, pocket all your cash, and you can do whatever you want. Right. You know? Exactly. I don't know what's wrong with some of these dummies. <laughs> They're pussy whipped. That's what it is. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Renee on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. How are you doing today? Doing great. I'm glad. I am so glad that you're talking about this subject. Um, it was actually on the radio last night, and it infuriated me. These women need to get off of their asses, help their husbands out in every way they can, and do what they're supposed to do. You're supposed to clean the house. You're supposed to take care of the kids. What happened to American tradition? My family came from Oklahoma to California back in the 30s, and all the women have been uh, cooking since 8 years old in my family. Uh, we're, we're all raised correctly. I don't see what the big deal is. It's not hard work. Everybody can load the dishwasher. Everybody can vacuum, you know. It's not difficult. Now, because women love to crack the whip and make us jump through hoops and tell us what we have to do. Well, if she's doing that, then you don't need her. Well, that's my okay. attitude about it. There's oh, not going to be another yeah. drill sergeant in my life, I'll tell you right now. Oh, yeah, I know. I've been listening to you for three years. I'm glad to say I have lost 25 pounds because of you. Very nice. Uh, I kind of let myself go a little bit, not completely, uh, but, you know, I got myself back together, and I owe it all to you, and I also learned how to shut up, too. <laughs> oh, yes, that's what every man dreams of. You know, you could go to the mall and try to shop for the perfect gift. But there's no better gift than a woman who just learns how to shut up. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, Tom, for taking my phone call. And I'm, I'm wondering how many pussy whip guys are going to really call today and say that oh, they help their wives with that. They probably have to ask mommy for permission. Oh, yeah, or to go out. And their wife probably weighs, I don't know, about 50 to 100 pounds overweight because that's exactly what happens. That's She's right. used to you doing everything. Oh, and, you're, you know, you should be serving your husband, which is what it also says in the Bible. I know that you are an atheist, Tom, but, I mean, come on, look at every religious background. It just repeats over and over and over again. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Take the man is in charge. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Tom, for taking my phone call. Thank you, Renee. Hi. Appreciate the call. Now, there's a real woman. Tell you what. Making his dinner, folding his shirts, perfect. No whining. Keeping her mouth shut. 
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Brady on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. Hey, listen, you know, I just, I heard the caller before the last one, and I have to jump on board and say you are so right. Do not get married. I married a lady. Uh, I worked in the apparel business for almost 15 years, and I married a model thinking, you know, hey, I've got it good, and it was great for a while. She drained every penny out of my account. We got divorced. I lost everything in that divorce, and uh, she remarried some other rich dude. Uh, now today, I've got my life back together. I'm a single guy. I love my life, and she has drained every penny out of his account now, and they're dirt broke. <laughs> That's how it is. Don't get married. You tell your listeners, all those guys out there that are 25 and 26 years old, if you've got a career, hold on to it. Hold on to that. Enjoy your life. Get your money. Have a good time. You know, God. I often think about the guy who right now is with my last ex-girlfriend. Oh, yeah. You know, because he's out there. I can tell you right now, uh, she's getting him to try to or trying to get him to pay for everything. <laughs> she's trying to get him to buy uh, expensive houses in communities where he can't afford to live. She's trying to get him to buy her another car. She's trying to get him to spend money on, uh, you know, things like organic dog food. I'm telling you right now, there's a guy out there, and, you know, he probably just uh, does what she says. Tom, let me tell you this. When I figured out what I was doing wrong, and I realized that she married me for money, I went to her and said, look, I'm cutting up the credit cards. I don't want to do this anymore. We could live on cash for a while. You don't need all this. I'm not kidding you. Literally three days later, I'm reading the Sunday paper at my beach house, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'll write for you. She's like, I don't love you anymore. I'm leaving. That was the end of my marriage. Wow. So let me tell you, it's, you're dead right. There's a lot of gold diggers out there, and all they want is the gold and nothing else. So you just tell these guys, take it from me. Take it from Father Tom. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. Thank you, Brady. Take care, buddy. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Melanie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Tom, I have to say I'm so thrilled to hear you reading that article. I I thought I was honestly one, and to hear callers calling in about it, I thought I was the only woman who actually agreed with you in this area because... I was raised, my mom was a stay-at-home mom who homeschooled us, and she caught a lot of flack from her friends because my dad did not lift a finger in the house. He didn't cook. He didn't clean. He wasn't in charge of disciplining us. That was her responsibility. And a lot of people said, well, he's not doing anything. And she, her response was always, oh, that's right. He's only working 12-hour days to support us. And now that I've actually moved out, I live with my boyfriend, which I know you don't agree with, but I'm catching flack from my friends because while I do work a full-time corporate job, my hours are far less than his. And I come home every day before he does. I make sure the house is clean. I make sure there's a hot meal on the table for him. I make sure there's not a speck of laundry in sight. And it brings me such pleasure to do this. And I have so many women who just attack me for this behavior. And it's absolutely absurd. Yeah, well, these women wear army boots, and they are drill sergeants, and I don't know why any man would want to be with one of them. Well, I have to say, every single one of them, their boyfriend or their husband, they're all total limpists and have no backbone whatsoever. To me, that's really appalling. But it, nothing makes me happier than seeing how happy my boyfriend is to come home and know he doesn't have to worry about a thing. And when his friends come over, I play the perfect hostess, and I make sure that they've got whatever they need, and I'm out of there. Here's the other thing I really resent about American women, is that they not only have this attitude at home, but then they take it on the road, and they start uh, uh, belittling their husbands and boyfriends in front of other people. Uh, he's such a mess. You know, our house is always such a mess. He never does anything around it. You ever see women do that? I do, and it just it really does appall me. And I, I've called many women on and said, great, you just gave everybody else an excuse to bash him, too. You know, way to show respect for him. Oh, yeah. But it's it, there's something seriously, seriously distorted with the mentalities of American women. And like Renee said, that's, that, that's the core American value. That's how things always were. And people talk about Americans losing their, their original values and what we stood for. Yeah, it's because the world's been taken over by feminazis. They they want their cake and they want to eat it too and it's just they need to accept that you can't 
act like a man and be treated like one. It's, it's ridiculous. Right. You not be treated like one. Leave yeah. the cake eating to me. Sound like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. A fat girl is kind of like a scooter, okay? It, it, they're fun to drive until somebody catches you. It's the Tom Likas Show. sent in to me about housework and sex. A survey claims that men who do more housework may get more sex. And I say men who live alone don't have to do housework to get sex or anything else. So why don't you live alone? For God's sake, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How you doing, Tom? Great. Hey, well, I do all the work uh, for finances, and I do all the housework, and she does nothing. She just lays around and, uh, you know, she can't even get the kids to school on time. But, you know, as far as sex goes, I mean, any time I want sex, she's up for it. But the woman has no drive, I mean, to do anything. So uh, if she doesn't do anything, why are you still there? Because she knows that if we break up and I own Hampton Blowers, that she will get uh, a huge sum of money. That's exactly right. You know, I asked you that question like a test question, and very few guys get it right. You're absolutely right, because she knows if you don't like the way it is, she's going to get cash. Oh, big time, big time. And you know what? And and, and then they, they, they bring the, you know, it's it just, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a I, I can't believe how stuck we are in California. And it is it is ridiculous with the, with, with the, DNA stuff and, and and you know I just gotta lay in my bed now because because it is definitely cheaper to keep her. I mean she she knows that you know it, it it'll I mean it'll end me if I if I it's just ridiculous, Tom. Well, I agree with you. It's, and you've been married, I imagine, more than ten years. Oh yeah, I've been married fourteen years. Mm hmm. So and, you're uh, screwed. You have to stay there until she's dead. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Isn't that sweet? Not a sweet gig? Uh, you you sound just thrilled to be married. Uh, it's it's just the best. Um, Sorry, uh, I know. I that, see. That you're the kind of you're the ki you. you're the kind I of. I want to listen to you years ago. Boy, so do I. You're the kind of beaten dog I'm talking about. You're the kind of guy I see guys like you sitting at Hooters, eating wings, and watching a game uh, by yourself. Oh, you're at the ESPN zone of the local I bar. You're talking about your other house and stuff, and I'm like, oh, this guy has got it on. He's got it going on. And because so, I knew not I'm to so give it to screwed. some bitch. Oh, well, you've been married four times. The lucky you got out of them. Uh, Nothing lucky uh, about it, Jeff. Without a scrape. I have a zero tolerance policy about I some stuff. You didn't have. Children, and that's one of the zero tolerance policies. I I refuse to have children, and I refuse to be uh, tied up with a woman, uh, so that she could make demands on me for the rest of my life. I refuse to let it happen. Hey Tom, a couple of things on uh, Obama. I, uh, I want you to check out the, his middle name is Hussein, and he's a Muslim. No, he's not. That's not true. I seen a picture of him and his uncle both wearing turban. He, he was, he was. Uh, first of all, he was uh, in Africa, uh, just like women wear uh, traditional garb when they go to Arab countries. Uh, the picture you saw of Barack Obama was him visiting Africa. Uh huh. And uh, it's just, it's all this uh, this phony baloney stuff on the internet. Do not believe everything you see. It's not true. Pledge of allegiance. And he Barack Obama stolen. is not. A Muslim. 
he won't even say the Pledge of Allegiance. He that is not. That is also he, not true. <laughs> Are you sure it's, about that one? Yes, I am. Hold on a second, Casey. What did you want to say to Jeff? Uh, I think Jeff is a little pussy whipped. Um, I'm married, and uh, I work all the time, and my wife does all the work at home. I don't have to lift a finger when I get home. Very nice. Well, lucky for lucky for you. Yeah, I, I think I think you need to drop that bag and 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 get out of it if you if she can't. Hey, please, we're on the air. Watch, watch your mouth. With, uh, all right, boys, uh, thank you for that. Oof. Well, again, did we all grow up in the same country? Are you guys aware that uh, broadcasting is regulated by the federal government? Is it, re is it necessary for me to explain that the F word can never, ever be said on the radio ever, ever, ever? That guy was 40 years old. I mean, I, is it necessary to explain this stuff? How stupid can you be? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is George on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yes. How are you today? Great. Hey, man. I'm praying one day that you find your soulmate, man, because everybody in the world has one. If you haven't, no, here, no. Is this Doctor Neil Clark Warren? Who is this? George from Riverside. Oh, I thought you were Doctor Neil Clark Warren. Everybody has a soulmate. Uh, yeah, do we have 29 has. levels of compatibility? Uh, you know what? It's hard to say, but the one day you're gonna find her, dude, because I found mine. I've been married for 18 years, five kids. I have the final say decision in the house. My wife cleans everything, but everything is passed through me. What does she and look like? I, and I pass it through her, so we have a mutual agreement. Right. What does she look like? Uh, I don't know, 5'3", 140 pounds. 140 pounds. Well, there you go. There's no free lunch. No, sir. She well, she's eating a few. a day on top of the house, on top of five kids, right. and she doesn't like to spend money. 340 so pounds. That's pretty hefty. I got the perfect wife. Even though she's 140 pounds and 5'3"? Doesn't make a difference if she's 200. Uh, yeah, but it does, you see. It, like the, the, the I would the never I'm be hoping. satisfied. I would never be satisfied to be with somebody who looks like that. Well, it's... it's you, I can afford you're the best. Visual. You're looking at a visual. Yes, concept. yes. Hardest, because you know what? Men stuff. are visual. That's why men love pornography and strippers and what have you. Men are visual. Okay. And in order to be aroused, I need to like what I'm looking at. And if what I'm looking at has rolls of fat with sweat dripping down, I can't get aroused. It's just the way I am. You're, see, it's because you're just looking for one thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I put it this way. I'm okay. looking for that. It's at the top of my list. If the sex isn't there, the rest doesn't matter. <laughs> hey, you're looking to stimulate your mind, not always. No, I'm not. I st you know what? My job is pretty goddamn stimulating. I don't need to go home to any further mind stimulation. I need I need other I need other kinds of stimulation, if you know what I mean. If that keeps you happy just to satisfy part of you and not completely satisfy uh, Wait a minute. I, I, the point is, I am satisfied all over. I get my mind satisfied by coming to my fantastic job every day. And then I get my body satisfied by the hottest chicks on planet Earth. Every day? Whenever I want it. <laughs> but you got to pay for it. No, I don't. <laughs> I just bought I just bought a second house, pal. <laughs> I bought 20 acres up uh, in, in wine country up uh, in Santa Barbara County. I tell you, if I were paying for sex, I couldn't afford to do that. <laughs> well, good luck to you. One day I hope you will be completely happy. Uh, don't, I don't you think you'll again, well, again, it's it's typical misery loves company. It's typical of guys like you who are bogged down with wives who are 140 pounds and have five kids. It's typical of you to want all of us to be in the soup with you. <laughs> the only soup I get into, I get into the hot tub and I make a little, you know, a little Salvadorian soup, make a little tortilla soup. You know, I make a little soup in my backyard. Really? Well, yes, I do. I guess you must be the exception of the rule. I don't know what I am, but I'm very, very happy. Very happy. 1-800-5800-TOM is your telephone number. It's Cynthia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Cynthia. Listen, um, I really wanted to talk to you because, like, what you're talking about today, it totally starts according to me because 
I catch a lot of heat from my friends because they say that I'm real stupid, but I don't think I am. See, Tom, when I was growing up, my mother passed on the wisdom from my grandmother, and my grandmother, my mother always told me, look, if you're not ready to give sex to your man whenever he wants it, wherever he wants it, headache or not, if you're not ready to do that, then don't get married. Can't say that, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. You know, she, you know, she always said, do whatever you have to do to satisfy your man, and and if you're not ready to do that, and put yourself last and clean up the house, take care of the kids. You could and... say that the Phoenix Suns blew a big lead by getting Shaquille O'Neal. You could say that. Okay. You, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you could say, uh, yes. Uh, you could say that uh, Juan Pierre blew a pop-up that he was trying to catch. You could say that. But you can't say what you said. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't, okay, well, but you know, and... And the rooster it, could say cock a doodle do. <laughs> but, um, you know, I um, I try to keep myself in shape, which I, I have done. You know, and we have three kids, and I stay on top of everything, and I try to be the best wife I can. And they, I catch a lot of heat from them because he did cheat on me once, and I did forgive him. <laughs> I don't think it was that big of a deal. I mean, you know... Things happen. He's a man, and mm -hmm. things happen. Oh, uh, boy. You're the kind of wife a guy should have. Things happen. Because you know you know why, Tom? Because he didn't have an affair on me. He just lived with her, and, well, she's a slut. I just said it's a secret him. Well. Uh, Knowing he was married and had kids. So why should I lose my life and my everything and take my kid's father away just because some floozy decided to give it up to him? Wow. Well, you think that'll ever happen again? If it does, well, you know, Tom, honestly, as long as he doesn't, and I know you're going to say, oh, there she goes, as long as he doesn't have an emotional connection with somebody and he does it again, I didn't leave the doors open where he knows that I feel this way. I'm just telling you the way I feel. Yeah, I understand. I'm, I feel that as long as he doesn't have no emotional connection with somebody and doesn't cheat on me emotionally, I don't care what he does because my grandmother always said men have needs. And if women are there to give it to them, he's going to do it. Don't take it personal. It's not that he doesn't love you. It's just, just the way men are. Wow. They can't keep it in their pants. It's the way they are. My grandmother always told me. My mother always told me. And my mom always told me, don't take it personal. It's the way men are. And, and she always told me, if you're not ready for this, then don't get married. Because and, and my grandmother, believe it or not, Tom always said, it's unnatural for women to ask men to be faithful. It's unnatural. Really? Yeah. Wow. Do you have a sister? <laughs> I have plenty of sisters, and we're five. And, and you do. My mother raised us all the same. Sounds, all the same. sounds good to me. And I don't feel I'm being submissive or I let my man step on me. I happen to live a very happy life, and my girlfriends just don't get it. Wow. Cynthia, thank you for the call. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.